yes, you could have a grand off. The Volkswagen Golf R Mark VI has sold and gone this morning, but it ain't the right engine. Someone's swapped the engine around and it's got the wrong code. Sold all the stock, we need some new stock. Baron Motors new edition. A built-in phone holder. Now, what did you get with your first car? My first car was a... So let's have a look at something else that we bought. Yeah, I can tell you a weird story about it. Joker on camera. This guy that's supposed to turn up Sunday, I'd raise on Saturday to meet me at two o'clock Sunday. Mm. Get a text off him at uh, 10 o'clock Sunday morning. No apology, I'll be there at four. Uh, all right, that be that. not the end of the world. <laughs> but I was here at two anyway, and then around right. about half two, three o'clock, get another text, won't be there before five o'clock. I rang and I said, Forget it, mate. I ain't hanging around all day. I've got things to do. Yeah. Oh, I've got to wait for you, mate. I was like, yeah, I've already put, you know, I've cancelled two things. I ain't doing it again. So, yeah. so he, he texted me. He said, oh, we'll sort out in the morning then, shall we? So, bring it back. so I texted him and I said, yeah, we're open to five. If you want to meet in the evening, I cannot stay late Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Yeah. Otherwise, nine to five, Monday, Friday. And he's on his way now. I said, you better check the traffic because. Wait, stay late. Yeah. To tell me you'll be here at 4.40. i like, oh, thanks. So you know he's going to turn up at 5 to 5 <laughs> and then mess me about for an hour. Oh, yeah. can I drive it? What about this? What are you going to do about that? So, yeah. What cars? The oh. So, and he wants it cheap as well. Got for 20 grand stars. <laughs> oh, no, the guy who bought the Tesla, he said, I want this done, I want that done. So he's got four wheel alignment. Uh, that was it. Have you done something else? But yeah. Um, here's your money. It's yeah. I mean, if I was buying a car, I was having the trade as well. And say I was buying, and, and it was you know five grand. If I go, so, is that the cam up done? No. We do the cam up for the asking price. Yeah. That's reasonable. All right. New MOT. And if it's over six months, I will pay the asking price for the MOT. Yeah. Or can I have like two hundred pound off the guy? Funny enough, the guy. I was going to see the Kia Stinger, hopefully that'll sell tomorrow. He asked for a grand off. And I obviously don't know how much we've got in it, and what, we don't have to do anything to that car. Yeah. Clean it, we've checked it over, it can go, that's it. So we haven't really yeah. spent anything, a penny on it. Obviously, we spent 20 grand on it, 20 odd grand. So, it, you know, when you said, can I have a pound off, that's right at the limit of what I would consider. I was going to ring back saying, no, you can have 500, but he wouldn't, I don't think he'd bought it. I think yeah. it was one of these, it's like, done, I'll have it. So we make enough money out of it. Yes, you could have a grand off. So you know, if somebody comes in and says, "What's your best price?" We'd never set phones and pay off. Yeah. But it was right, you know, right there. And I knew that we had good profit in it. And obviously, we swapped it for the other Tesla as well. So there's kind of there's a lot of cash in that car, as it were, mm. because we don't have to do anything, rather than sort of hanging on for an extra maybe five hundred quid and maybe yeah. a crappy pie exchange. Bosh, twenty-two thousand eight hundred pounds, please. Off you go. Yeah. Probably never to darken our doorway, well, won't, because it's got a key warranty. Um, and we'd have to do it. It's just things like that, there. Eh? Yeah, so that's a good one. But yeah, normally, Dan, somebody offered us five grand for the six thousand two hundred pound mini. So actually, I probably would have said, "Tell you what, I'll trade it you for five grand because that's yeah. what we paid for it." What does that mean? Well, it means if it goes wrong, you never come back to us. No. Oh no, I wouldn't want that. Well, in that case, you have to pay the retail price then. Yeah. <laughs> Other than the knackered Range Rover Vogue, don't know what's going on with that. And the equally knackered BMW M3, don't know what's going on with that. Well, actually, I do know somebody's going to bring us back to see if we can book it in. Yeah. So, yeah, nothing exciting, really. Hopefully, there's a guy who wants to buy. Oh, 
the I've got two guys interested in the vans actually. Strangely, both want the wet belts done. It's a thousand pound with Ford, so it's eight hundred quid plus van. Yeah. It's not you know it's not the end of the world. What I said to the two guys buying it, if you contribute, I think I said to one three hundred and one two fifty. Ford will do it. And there you go. Yeah. You know, newly serviced, wet belt replaced van that you won't have to worry about for years and years. Like people are coming out on test drive and then they say, oh, I've got a party stage and then, you know, they don't tell you, like, say your car's six grand, yeah. they've got like a 20 grand. It'd go funny if they go with the CRV. He never told me that he had a 20 grand Honda CRV when he came in test drive. He drove the Jag. Yeah. Then he said, oh, I've got this to party stage Honda CRV. Like, oh, always good news, you know, the 20 grand Honda CRV. Like, oh. <laughs> I mean, we did well out of it, but that's beside the point. But yeah, and then, you know, or they'll say, you know, I've got a pipe exchange, like that little, with the polo. Yeah. You know, oh, I need more than that, but it's not worth more than that. That's it. Hello. Hello. Just using a tyre depth gauge, which I haven't used one of those in a long time. Uh, because uh, offering our Porsche box to up for sale, just because, I don't know, I think it's too nice and low mileage for us in a sense. So I'm going to try it on dealer auction, see if someone, see how the dealer auction thing works, see if someone snaps that up or not. Um, Jason and Charlie are, uh, well, Charlie should be on his way back from Western with a Skoda Fabia thing um, that we've bought from, like, well, through dealer auction. It's, there's a theme here, isn't there? I'm using dealer auction now. Um, and then Jason will be back. We've got someone coming to have a look at the Hyundai i800. The Volkswagen Golf R Mark VI has sold and gone this morning. Quite a funny story with that. The guy, I'm sure I could tell you because I'm sure his girlfriend won't find out, but he's wanted a Golf R for ages. So much so that he made his 1.4 TSI look like a Golf R Mark VI with the right wheels and body kit and stuff like that. But his girlfriend wouldn't allow him to have one. But she's away with ho uh, on holiday with her family. So he turned his phone off so she couldn't track him. And he's come down here and he's bought that one because it's the same color and it looks the same, but it's gonna have the better engine in the hopes that she won't notice fair effort why not and yeah I think the Kia Stinger may be going today we weren't going to get a chance we get a chance to do a video on that that's gonna be a shame isn't it thinking about that um, someone's just dead keen on it and it's gonna come down take it away I think uh, Jason's been dealing with it and yeah someone's coming to have a look at the Hyundai bus so I pulled that out for them um, we've got someone mad keen on the Jaguar XFS so looking busier again which is good um, yeah I'm trying to buy some stuff at auction but prices are still crazy poor old bash our garage mascot is in the specialist vets at the minute because he's got uh, he's in kidney failure he's got into something he shouldn't do he's a bit of a scavenger found him going through the bins the other day but he could have picked something up from anywhere there's nothing in the bins really that should have caused this but um, yeah, so I wasn't in first thing this morning, so I thought I was going to have bad news. So they've given him another day to try it with the fluids and whatever. So I will hopefully find out this evening, but my head is not in the game, as you can imagine. That's my best bud. But fingers crossed, he will be okay. Yeah, that's it. Just trying to keep busy. And like I say, listing that 
and whatever else. We even had Steph out getting involved with this uh, Dacia a minute ago, trying to do a sail thing. Jason was out. Uh, well, everyone was out pretty much. But they turned up and they looked at this, but she got inside and uh, Steph was just telling me that she got inside. She's like, oh, it's very boring. But she's comparing it to her high spec. Uh, Volkswagen Yeti with leather and sat nav. So where's the sat nav and all that sort of stuff? Oh, there is a media. Jeez, I haven't actually even looked inside this car. It's got like a flap on the dashboard that says media control, as if like it's some kind of space shuttle. You can open that up and there's some very old school LED screen in there. Yeah, what else has been happening? Not much. What have we done? What have we done? What have we done? James, Chops Gary, said off me an Alpha yesterday. Half tempted by that, you know. Oh, Dan's currently off buying a car from a subscriber or a subscriber's cleaning lady. It's a hell of a car for a cleaning lady, I've got to say. It's a 2020 BMW 530D. And I think tomorrow we'll be sending him down to Plymouth to pick up another 530D, but this time a Touring. Very nice car, both very nice. Um, so hopefully we'll get some videos of those. I'm trying to think what else, don't know. But I'm gonna go back and have a look at the auctions again. I've got something quite interesting that I might do a video on if I can get anywhere near buying it from BCA Auctions. I'll tell you what else, let's go in, let's go in the workshop and I'll tell you something else that they're cheerful that the lads are telling me. Is it the wrong number? Yeah. Should have. HNZ. Mm. It's got HNZ. Oh, it's one of those ones where you. All oh, right, it goes over the top. This one sold as well. The old Tesla. The S three seventy Tes. So I don't know when that's going, but obviously it's on charge, ready to go. This C four cactus. I. Do you know what? I made a mistake. I should do a separate video on this, but maybe we will. Maybe we won't. <coughs> Oh, allergies. It's a pure tech, a 1.2 pure tech, like spawn of Satan as far as engines go. Shouldn't buy it. Anyway, it turned up and it was doing some weird things and it basically had a broken clamp on the turbo. So the guys have got a replacement one, they've put that on. But they're doing the servicing now, so they've all the service parts for it. And I bought this from BCA Bristol, you may remember. But it ain't the right engine. Someone's swapped the engine around. Um, and it's got the wrong code, so it's from an older or a newer car or something, which I can't imagine I'm going to get much luck with, but it seems like perhaps it's not quite compatible with the fuel pump or something, because they've got a few fault codes now. So, there's a couple recently, that sounded horrible, hopefully he's not looking, he's, he's looking, he's going to come in and be like, can you help me with my brakes, because they're making a horrible noise. Unless as you will come in to look at our Hyundai i800, which it could well be. And who is it who told me? James Alford. You might have seen me walk around the forecourt with me. He came in and visited me the other day. He says every single one he's ever sold, and he sold a lot of them, was bought by a teacher. So we'll find out, I guess. Um, yeah, so I don't know what we're going to do with that. In fact, I need to go in the office now and have a look, see if it was on an assured report. Uh, cause that's the only way you really get any money back from BCA is if they've, but then it's not within 48 hours, but we weren't necessarily going to find out that the engine wasn't right in that time, were we? But then again, these things happen at auction. I should have been paying attention. I should never have bought a pure tech in the first place. Hey ho. Well, after my four sales yesterday, I sold all the stock. I need some new stock. Uh, no, I've got. Um, let's have a look. In fact, I'm waiting on, waiting on um, car finance twenty four seven to 
confirm that somebody's going to buy the lovely Dacia Jogger, mm -hmm. which apparently comes with a bed kit. Somebody told me, so let's have a look. Sleep pack, there it is. Oh, it's just, oh, I see. <laughs> so, yeah. That's quite cool. And there it is. 1300 quid. Yeah, it does seem a little bit extravagant. But, it's from Dacia. Yeah. Yeah, when somebody said it, I was like, what? Yeah, hopefully that'll be sold. Oh. I don't know, but when we did the purchasing, was it at 41,000? It's actually 42,000. So if it had been a thousand more miles and a dent, and I think oh. there's another dent on the bill, I'd have said. And she's like, oh, I want all the money, otherwise I'll do it. I said, keep it, forget it. Go and get pissed around by motorway. <laughs> Joe said he was like, it's one of them, and it borderline, but yeah. For 20 odd grand and she forgot to mention it's got a bloody grand. i mean it's a big ding for a 20 grand car all right you know in the grand scheme of things mike should be able to sort out for 50 quid but that's beside the point yeah you know if that goes to body shop it's only 300 quid worth of work appreciate you coming on mate and um, there's probably a million things I didn't uh, remember to ask you but it was a good pick in your brains and I look forward to seeing this this new site and where you go to next. Podcast was good. Rory is someone I wanted to get on for ages or ever since I started the podcast really because uh, I heard him on another one and he sells some very nice cars. Um, he's by the sounds of it getting a very nice new premises. Um, so we might be able to go out there and film it, check out some of his motors. Okay, we are From Lamborghini Urus to, to that sort of stuff. Stuff that I'll never own. Have you seen Tugboat's Halloween costume? He's <laughs> been trimmed and he looks like some kind of emo kid band frontman. Don't you Tugboat, come on. Show the people at home. Look at the eyes. He's got like dog scara around his eyes. What have they done to you? You used to be a sweet fluffy bear and now you look like some kind of glam rocker. Dacia Jogger, so that'll be oh, yeah on its way to Bournemouth. We've got the photographs uploaded for our lovely, uh, lovely Skoda Fabia, one litre TSI DSG Auto. It actually drives really nice. I was very impressed for a little tiny engine. Economical too. It's softer than I was expecting. I thought it'd have quite hard suspension, but it's quite comfortable. I'd go as far as to say bouncy. Uh, but yeah, nice new gear changes. Quiet, nice car all round. Barrow Motors, Jason speaking. Ah, yes, I spoke to Causeway this morning. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I, he said uh, because apparently there's a tech bulletin for the MOT testers to say don't um, use ETH, uh, wireless um, diagnostic machines. Um, but then Stefan Army Mechanic says, yeah, all you've got to do is reset the battery for 10 minutes. So, yeah, I mean, obviously it's a pain in the, in the backside. I, I, I mean, ultimately, I would suggest Swallows are the best people for it to go to. But 
it's up to you. I mean, I'm quite happy to go elsewhere than us. Um, but if you're stuck for a car, then perhaps, you know, it might be an idea to get a loan car. But yeah, I'm kind of happy to go with what you think is best yourself. You know, obviously you've got to go to somebody with more technical expertise than us. Um, uh, and they're just at the A38, about a mile or so. They're the Jaguar kind of racing specialist up the road. They're really good. But whether there's one nearer to Causeway or that you would prefer going to, obviously it needs to be somebody Jaguar. Um, but Swallows are, you know, they are the business. Yes, that's the other thing, yeah. But yeah, keep, keep you posted. And obviously if it's going to be a long process, you know, I haven't got, typically I haven't got one in now, but I'll, you know, we'll have a low car in a day or two that you can borrow if you need to, need to do so. All right, mate. No, sir, Matt. We'll get it sorted. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Talk to you soon. Tell her. It's the... The white F pace that we've had in a few times, 100 oh yeah. Once those bloody ingeniums get to 100,000 miles, that's it. They're finished. Might as well forget it. Uh, basically, he's taken it to Causeway because he kept having engine management lights and various, just little things going wrong. Causeway, I don't know, obviously, with the conversation have said, because we've plugged it in with a non-Ethernet OBD you know, diagnostic, that's why his battery's gone flat, because his battery went flat as well. But all it needs, so I'm told, so Stefan reckons, is to be reset for 10 minutes. So why Causeway can't do that? Or maybe they, they haven't got a code reader that they're willing to use on, I don't know. So I'm going to go and buy an i20 in a minute. Hopefully buy some more joggers. Apparently they've got three more that we can have. For some reason, they MOT'd that car twice. It's only two years old. It's a bit weird, but obviously it passed. Wait, there's some very expensive tyres for the Tesla. Tried to order an add blue tank was fun and that Joe was obviously on the obviously busy so I'll get another code for him hopefully he'll send me that uh, me and Dan had a big row about what size the wheels of Tesla I'm still convinced they're not right but we'll, we'll brush over that uh, photographs I valued a few cars as well part exchange from a Vauxhall insignia for our Vauxhall insignia it's mad is the guy's got an insignia exactly the same age as ours similar spec but diesel 1.6 diesel ours is 1.4 petrol um, but ours has got 45,000 bars and this has got 23 retail on ours is 7.2 his pie exchange value is like 4 grand <laughs> I said if we make 2 grand out of it it'd be fine so I've said to him we'll do a deal if yours is good we'll exchange for 1500 quid because we can sell his for another we'll sell it for eight and a half hopefully half a million emails about the finance on the jogger the, the reason i thought because if you if you if you go online there's quite a big hoo-ha about the rear wheels being bigger than the front wheels on certain model threes mm. and if you look at ours if you can see the back wheels the, the tires are the right size but they're stretched do you know what i mean they've yeah, got yeah. that stretch look um, which would suggest that they are different sizes, but Dan was convinced that is because it's just the name, name make of the tyre. But I've ordered another pair of the same size, so we'll, we'll see. So it rather annoying me, because when it came in, um, said we need two tyres, and then when you look closely, you quite obviously need four tyres, because the cords were bloody showing on the front ones as well. Mm. So that was a bit frustrating. So now we've got two on the front that are one make and two on the back that are another make, whereas we could have had four all the same. But such is life. Yeah, and the guy that bought our Volvo D40, I don't know if you remember that black auto thing. We own a bit of paint, but obviously James, if you ever see this, and we actually do show this bit, I hope you get rough soon, uh, is incapacitated. So I've got another painter in Limpton that hopefully might be able to do us better prices than body shop prices, which are expensive. Mm. Like ridiculously so. <laughs> Anywho, let's go and buy a car. Baron Motors new edition. Eleven thousand miles, mate. Yeah, dude. Oh, Eleven thousand miles on the clock. Also, yeah, a bit posh, isn't it? It's nice. Yeah, not too bad. A bit of polishing and stuff to do on it, some touching up and whatnot, but 
She'll look the part after we're finished with her. It's nice. On the passenger side. Hey. On the passenger Done side. The passenger side. Wow. Apart from the rear quarter and rear door and all that. Oh, that's good. Obviously, it's not pulled out of the house. No more head scratches. Can't complain. Yeah, dude. Lovely car. Yeah. The, the actual colour of this is stunning. I reckon BMW do black better than anyone else does. Yeah. They got about 18 different shades of it, mind, haven't they? <laughs> something important then. How do you radio? Look at that! Media control. Got a built-in phone holder. Oh, I thought it was a screen. Nah. That's really, really good. Except for Jason has said, try and work the radio. I've now been made to feel really old because <laughs> I have no idea. I don't need to know. It's sold. <laughs> it's for someone else to work out. It's for your phone. Oh my god. How? That's quality. <laughs> Except for like Jason has said, try and use the radio. Uh, um, what do Hello Joe. How are we doing? Alright, thank you. It's looking good, isn't it? Do you prefer, do you prefer this then? Yeah, 100%. Don't you? I can't decide yet. I keep mm. looking out there and looking at everything getting wet and dirty and thinking, oh, it's getting wet and dirty. But now I've moved it away from the head. Well, look, I didn't say you had to have the classic stuff in here, but I mean, I think it does look good. It's way better than that stuff just sitting there. At least you'd be reminded you need to do something. Yeah, but well, I still think you could have your retail prep cars in here, but parked like that, so you can still walk through and... I thought you said the classics. Well, I might have done. I mean, that would be... If you're going to keep them, keep them around, then do that, but... Do you think it's more interesting than retail stuff or not? Yeah, I think it does. Or do you just come in and think these guys... Uh, do you think it's more interesting? I like having this. I thought you said to put... Like, the classics in. Blankets, that could be up there. <laughs> So you don't walk in and just think this guy's a random hoarder then? No, I think it looks fucking good. Okay, that's alright. No, I think it looks good. Yeah. Shows your passion for it, doesn't it? Despite Joe saying continuously that I'm like his mentor and he looks up to me, every now and then, I've got all the best of them, I can prove that all right. Uh, <laughs> no, I do listen to him every now and then as well. You know, I listen to what he says every now and then. And No, he's good for someone else to come and do because you come in every day into work and you just crack on. You crack on, you crack on, and then someone else comes in and points a few things out to you. I'm getting flooring, I'm going to get some flooring down, because this stuff always just peels up anyway. So, yeah, what are you going to put down? Oh, something just like the, the rubber tile things, yeah, yeah. yeah I think just like the rubber gym mat and stooping and locked together tiles. Mm. And, and as they're sitting around, they're not really going to ride it up, rock it up much at all, are they? So what do you think of my latest purchase? I just picked this up from a subscriber. Well, the subscriber dropped it to me. I just dropped it out to the, uh, to the uh, train station. What are you pointing out already now? I think it's just, just uh, you've got like this. Yeah, dirty it wants film. a good polish, doesn't it? That's not just going to yeah. be just cleaning, but it, it'll be very easy to do. Just looking. I thought it was scratches, but it's not. It's rain water marks that have been. It's got your favourite engine, the one point two Pure Tech. You're loving That's it. it. You're loving the engine at the moment, aren't you? It might be the one that I need for mine. Well, this one has had a cam belt just done. Right. So that is probably is what you need for yours. 
Yeah. This is the 130. Well, I just need the engine that matches my car. That'll Look be... how new it is, people. What's going on over here? Well, I'm I know, my... I've, I've well, seen your videos my... and I see that you're seeing the light. On my poo boxes. Of... That was clickbait. I'm going back to the old stuff now. I just needed a video that got some views. <laughs> I just go back again. I don't know how you could. You can afford to sell the nicer stuff now. I don't know why you wouldn't. Do you know what? It's like this polo over here has just come in. I just took this polo in. Yeah. Um, I just bought it from the, the from the main dealership. Uh, by the way, bad news on my Pi Exchange on my Hyundai i10. Ten. Right. Um, that is all the money I have in a deal selling my automatic i10 that into that Pi Exchange is sold. And my daughter's fell in love with it and wants it as her first car. <laughs> so what am I going to do, eh? So there's no money to be made out of that deal. Yes, yeah, so I just took this in and I thought, Polo, Polo sell well. Then I started looking around it and going, do I really want to be painting these bumper corners, machine polishing the whole thing, painting the wheels? As much as I actually quite enjoy doing those things, financially it just doesn't stack up, does it? Versus all this stuff here that needs a valet and then goes up for sale, do you know what I mean? I mean, no. even that Fiesta there. I'm, we've got things in that I was tempted to like, oh, do I message you and say, we're getting like a Astra, what would it be? Astra G, the, the newer one, not the boxy one, but the, anyway. Oh, no. oh, I can't remember which one it is. Either way, and it's got reasonable mileage on it, but it's just the paintwork's a bit tatty and it needs a drop link and bits and pieces. And we're going to service it anyway, but it's just like that sort of thing that to be borderline it might be worth like five grand to retail. But I'm just like, no, no, I just, no. It's, There's no, plenty exactly. enough cars out there. I mean, you'd hope a lot of this stuff here as well just doesn't come back as well, wouldn't you? Well, touch wood doesn't come back. Yeah. I guess the problems can be... Are they more expensive? I don't know if they are. On the st I mean, if you go to Range Rovers like you, I mean, most of this stuff here is still fairly simple motoring, isn't it? Yeah, I definitely don't condone going to the Range Rovers. What's that you're in today, then? Is that a 7 Series or a that's 5? a 7 Series, yeah. That's my that's raffle car. Is it? Yeah. Woo! Get in there for a pound, mate. Get in there for a pound? Yeah. Wow. 730D, it's 200... And oh, it's got the right engine, then. Something. It does not the 60 and 6.1. And... 65 miles per gallon. Really? Oh, BMW yeah. miles to the gallons figures there are normally a little bit over, oh, over, yeah. over egged, aren't they? I yeah. find. It's pretty good though. Especially because they are quick, so you end up putting your foot down all the time anyway, don't you? Yeah. But That's yeah. a nice car for a pound. How many miles has it got on it? Uh, 115. Okay. Well, there's no it's reason. It's got it service is. history and two keys, and I was tempted to have it for myself, you know, because it's. The thing We're doing with that, mileage, doing up and down the country and whatever, so comfortable, double glaze, all that sort of stuff. The thing with that is it's like all these people going about mileage, you know with that mileage on that car, it's been sat in top gear on motorways and dual carriageways with literally zero stress on that vehicle oh, yeah, at yeah. all. I'd almost have that over a, you know, like a one series that somebody would had round here locally and done 40 or 50,000 miles on the back lanes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's probably, that literally hasn't had any stress in its life that, as it just sitting there like that. People are so funny about mileage, aren't they? It looks really good sitting next to my little Suzuki Swift there. So Alfa Romeo you come to pick up today. Yeah. What Beauty. a beast. Have you, dream oh, you must have driven it. I have driven it. I haven't done any footage on it because no. I'm too lazy to plug any cameras in anywhere and do it. Have you actually tried retailing that now I, yeah. I had it retail for a little while and then yeah. i pulled it off again and i haven't put it back up because i was going to do the wheels and yeah I, you know after we did that call with the matey from the car program the other day oh yeah i thought am i getting a bit lazy with cars do i need to like fully prep them before i advertise them again so mm. i let load i basically let all my cars lapse on huge on auto trader and decided i was going to fully prep Start them all fresh and yeah machine polish them all MOT them all, service them all, do the wheels and then put them all up for sale. But I mean, you can give that a go if you want, if you think it fits in with your stuff. Mm. I mean, it's only sitting there, you can do a sale and return on it if you like. I mean, the colour looks so much better. I mean, everybody that's come along and loves the colour, but when you photograph it, for some reason it looks brown all the time. It might look better under your lights, but yeah. I photograph and it looks brown all the time. I just didn't know where to go with it. I mean, um, Dave, didn't he, said change the front grill over to the later grill and, and black do the, the wheels, wheels black. Do the wheels maybe, black. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe in Chesterfield, but... Yeah. I might do. Yeah, I'll, have a, I'll have, a, have a think on send it, Send me mate. the figures and whatever later and, or yeah, yeah. whatever you want to do. And I'll... I mean, perhaps we can, if there's something else, we can bundle it all in, maybe. Yeah. Something, I don't know if there's anything else that's really sort of your cup of tea, to be honest. Have you done anything with this yet? 
uh, I, I did have, I have put the advert up, but I haven't machine polished it and I haven't MOT'd it and all that kind of stuff. So again, that's what I'm saying. I kind of did a lazy advert because it was clean when it came in. Yeah. And I did like 10 photos and put it up, but I really need to. I'm quite I, liking hybrid -y stuff type. Oh yeah. I think I'm, they sell quite well. I immediately got a, a message from a subscriber and it wanted a walk around video on it, but I did a half a job on the walk around video really. I didn't, obviously I needed a machine, but it was dirty like this. I What's going to... on with you, man? What's I going know. on? Just getting behind, didn't I? And I can't decide whether I'm just trade or whether I'm retail, can I? Yeah. I think we're all feeling a bit like, not like, I'm not feeling whether I'm trade or retail, but I'm like, I'm, yeah. What I you... haven't felt enthused to crack on with stuff recently for some reason, I don't know why. Yeah. Um, I guess, I think you get a run of, I think sometimes if you get a run of warranty claims and bad cars, it can really knock you for six, can't it? And you can think, everything I'm doing now is free basically for the next however many cars because I'm just recouping what I, recouping what I've lost or, and, in, and, you, and, you, and you know, no offense, the public can get you down as well, can they get on top of you a bit, can't they? Just the constant, it doesn't matter how much you do for someone, they, there's some people that just want to keep, keep taking, aren't they? I love, I saw your what uh, the group message thing on the way up here. James was saying that he'd sold a car. How long ago? Uh, nearly six months ago. Yeah. I don't want to it's ruin you. Five think. months ago. And yeah. She, and she's just like, yeah. You said you'd do an MOT, and I've dropped off to the garage and told them you're paying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and this is a 2006, a 2006 Suzuki Vitara with 80,000 miles on it, and she's dropped. And she said, "Oh, the airbag was always on." I'm like, I wouldn't sell a car with an airbag light on it. So it must yeah. have kicked in later. And she said, "Oh, yeah, but." The, the um oh the I think the alternator went on it and I did the alternator on it. She said oh when it was it was on when it went in there. I said well why didn't you specifically you know we could have got it fixed at that point. So I guess I feel kind of obliged to do the airbag light on because it won't pass MOT with the airbag light on. But I just had the MOT result back and it does want a little bit of a welding on one of the sills. And I think oh, do I, this is why you got to stop doing the old crap. Yeah, do I do that or don't I do that? I mean, is that happened in six months? I don't know. And then it's got things like dust boots split, and I'm like, no, no, I'm not doing that. And yeah, talking it's... to Rory, the guy, because it was on yesterday, yeah. and he only buys like things that are like from the auctions on a short or whatever. And he's obviously built up to that, but that's kind of like where I feel like I want to go. Like, if you have problems with it, you can send it back. Yeah. And he doesn't have the problems that we get with the older stuff because he doesn't sell that. And I mean, he's just. Yeah, I mean, he bomb, must he's get bombing about in a brand been, yeah. new Lamborghini Urus, so he's doing something oh, is he? right. You yeah, it's a shame I missed that one. How many cars do you have on his lot? Uh, I don't know, actually. I think he's probably got maybe 50 or 60, but he's just bought, like, he's just put a million quid into a new place, basically, where he can have, like, 100 with a nice showroom and whatever. I wonder what the margin is when you're buying cars that, like, have no risk, they're assured. I mean, it's like mobility yeah, cars, he, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know, but he sell, he'll, he'll sell, like, 50 a month. That's the thing. I mean, I guess even if you're only netting, I mean, only netting, but you'd think a £1,000 a car, but this is what I'm starting to think now when I'm looking at stuff at auction and I built myself up to like, I want a three grand margin across most things Yeah. because, because then you, you've got all your costs and everything that come out of it. And I'm starting to think now, just buy the nicer stuff and you can afford to have a 1500 quid, 1700 quid margin because you won't be spending the money on fixing it up. If it comes theory, pretty much, if yeah. you buy privately and it comes pretty much ready. Theoretically, what does he need? Does he have mechanics? Yeah, he's got a couple of mechanics. He's got a couple of mechanics, and, okay. I mean, um, I guess there's still work to be done on them, but. It's like mobility stock. You think everyone must fight over mobility stock that comes in after three years with low mileage on and doesn't need a lot doing to it. Um, how can they really make money at it? But I guess it's time. You've got to work out what your time is, isn't it? It's like you could end up, that polo, you could say, right, you got, I mean, you're probably going to have 2K margin in it, but you could. I could spend two days painting that up and tarting that up. Whereas, you know, something comes in like this Alpha, to be honest, what does this Alpha need? Hopefully it's just a machine polish, well, not even a machine polish, just a, a, a wash and a stick yeah, it up job, clean isn't it? And a whatever, yeah. yeah, I don't know what the MOT, I can't remember what the MOT is on it, but so I, a car that's, a car. I, don't, I don't come down just to give you advice, but I, I think I get, I, I love businessy type things and whatever. So I, my opinion was if I was here doing your stuff, I'd keep buying all the stuff that you want and sell all the nice stuff that you want, trade out all the crap. And you can still, if you want the stuff that sells quickly, pick the nice, cheap, older stuff that comes in yeah. and sell that. So say, for example, that's just not one for you. You need someone, yeah. you'll be able to find someone simple who gets well, that. And the ones that are going to still going to sell, like you get a nice little Fiat 500 in and you know it's going to sell well and it's got a decent enough margin in it and it's just easy. I was thinking the same the nice thing last ones. night. I mean, like that, 2010 C1, but it's a nice C1. I haven't yeah. had to do much to it. I did two little bits of paint on the rear bumper 
and I've had to do nothing really else to it because it's a really nice one. And again, if you can whack it up and you look underneath and it's not, you know, like the Titanic under there, yeah. then you've got a bit of confidence. There's not too much that's going to go wrong with them. And I would keep those simple ones and then yeah. just try and... And then you can get by. Your overheads are so low. You don't have to be selling lows, do you? If, if that's the concern, what a lot of people is no. when they buy more expensive stuff, is like, oh, it doesn't sell that quickly. Well, it ain't going to matter, is it? Do you know what I find, though? The more expensive stuff does sell quickly if it's the right spec. Yeah. That's the thing. And uh, already prepped nicely and whatever. Yeah. Or you might not hear anything for two or three weeks. Then someone turns up, yeah, we want it. That's it. Love it as yeah. it is. Happy, away. money, gone. The next question is, should I push more finance as well? Is that going to help me with nah. more my higher end stuff? No. Nah. I don't, I don't think, so. think so. But no, I think you're right. I think there's nothing wrong with doing the cheaper cars, but I think you have to pick and choose the ones you're starting out with a better car in the first place. Yeah. You start trying to turn a scruffy, scruffy cheaper car into a retail car and you just end up in a massive hole. Yeah. So yeah, I've, I've, um, I haven't cleared up in here yet. I did actually do a I wheel. Just, I did stick my head in and it's, you know, you're getting more space back though. Oh, I've got loads of space. I just need to clean it out now. I just need to find the time to clean it out. That's kind of like, like this month for me, is a bit of a, like a hiatus. It's a bit of a stop and... Yeah, like right, a fire break. Can, yeah, can consolidate and just... I mean, I'm still doing... I did these wheels the other day and now I left, put it out in the rain and it freaking rained while I was... It rained while I was out. Yeah. And uh, that just doesn't seem so obvious now. They all like... Not in natural light now. No, I wonder if it's cleared itself now. Like the rain got in the lacquer and I thought, oh, what am I doing doing painting alloys? It's, it's cleared, I think. The DL. What do you think? Looks, you boys. Looks fine to me. That's my uh, attempt at trying to do something that's similar to a, to a diamond cut. It's actually cleared. Flipping you are good. If, I tell you what, people, I'm a very happy bunny if it has cleared. Because I, what I did is I painted it with lacquer then. My family wanted to go out for lunch and I moved it outside. And it got like this, um, it got this funny thing in the paint, like milkiness. <gasps> I don't have to redo them. Oh, that makes me so happy. What about this one over here then? Now, your opinion do you know on what this? I would change though, James? What's that? Get the bloody National Crash Repairs Limited off the front. Someone else said that the other day. I hadn't noticed that, yeah. I hadn't noticed that. It's got a Hyundai number plate on the back, which is oh, yeah, now you can, now, now, I wouldn't have looked, but now that I've seen that, I'm like, oh, what's, what, where's the funny paint then? You can see the bonnets had a, or is that just a, is that pits or is that just where they've touched it? That's stone in? chip, isn't it? Well, but there, if you come and look at it from here, it looks like it's, you know, when you get the, like, um, spec an... paint when the oh, okay. lacquer's gone on too heavy, but it could just be stone chip. No, I'd have, thought, I'd have thought it'd be the bumper. Yeah. It's not on the register, I've checked that. But I say this no, no, people... I'm sure, it, you know, all cars get a little bit of something, don't they? But... Do you know why I get so fed up with people saying that? It's like, try, you're not buy, you think you're buying cars that have never had a bump. I'm telling you, the car you bought Unless you, it's had a bump, even if you bought it brand new, there's a good chance yeah. it's been painted before you well, got especially it. Especially if you find one that looks really tidy at an older age. Yes. That's probably because it has been. You so, know. And also, if it's been sold a couple of times, that's what's every time I put a car up, I'm like, oh, look, it's got, I, this car's got seven owners. Nick in the group chat will always say, oh, it's a seven lots of prep then. <laughs> Going through a garage, it's been prepped and it's probably had a little bit of touch. I like it. Whatever. So what's your thoughts on these alloys then? So that one... See, I've got this in here to do the alloys. Yeah. Now that one looks all right. That one looks like it just needs a relacquer. This one, yeah, it's got one little mark there. Yeah. I'm thinking, do I just do a couple of spokes on them, like I've done on that wheel over there? Because that one's bang on. It's only one wheel that really has. So I don't know if it's a bounce off with this stuff. That's this one wheel here definitely needs doing, doesn't it? But I'm thinking the other wheels. None of the other wheels really look like they need doing, do they? But my problem is, if I do that one wheel, is it going to look significantly different in this style? So what's the two worst ones? Well, I'll tell you what I would do, and people would slate me for it, but I would do two of them and keep them on this side of the car. Because right. you're not seeing both sides of the car at the same time, are you? Well, I think only one of them needs doing. Well, I think only one of them, but the thing is, is it going to look significantly different with this finish to that finish? So this is my... Because you can't well, only yeah, it's gonna it's going to look different. That's why I think maybe you do two and have them on one side of the car. Or do I take one wheel off and go and get a diamond cut? Or do I paint them all black or grey? Nah, there isn't a car for black wheels, I don't think. No. See, so you wouldn't normally prep any of these wheels, would you? Because they're not bad enough. There's only one with a tiny scuff on it over there. It, this isn't advertised, though, I take it. No. I certainly hope not, judging by all the stuff on it. No, I wouldn't I'm bother. Not. I wouldn't bother doing any of them uh, to start off with. And if they say, oh, it's a shame about that wheel, isn't it? Like, don't worry, I'll get, tell you what, 
give me the full asking price and I'll get that worst one sorted for you. And then what you've got to do, you've got to spend 70 quid on getting one wheel diamond cut. Yeah, but it slows it going out the door, doesn't it? Mind you, there is the in between but, where I do that one wheel in that style, put it on the car and then see if anybody spots it when they come and if they're not happy with it, then we go away and get, get diamond cut. At least for the photos, it won't have oxidization on it, will it? Yeah, so what I'd like to do is get, if Brooke wants that car, she needs to do some work for me. So I'm only going to get her in here and get a, get a cleaning. Get a cleaning this out. What did you get for your first car? My first car was a classic Mini Clubman that had a Metro 1275 engine in it and I put some horrendous body kit on it. I bought it at 15 and started working it for 500 quid and then worked on it in my dad's garage. Like this. That's why when I come in here, it smells like my dad's garage. It reminds me of that. Right. But actually, it wasn't ready. So what I drove around in was a Astra H Estate with a 1.7 Isuzu diesel engine in it. I had no radio, so I had a CD Walkman in the slot where a radio would go and a couple of house speakers. Do you know? And I had more good times in that car, pulled more than any other car I've ever had ever since. Yeah, because you were young. Yeah. And slim and attractive back then. I know. That's, that's, Those days are gone. It doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter how nice your car is now, we're yeah. still older and not quite so slim and attractive. Uh, Believe it or not, I know a lot of you will argue that in the videos. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah. Do you know what I never asked? I realised I'd never asked you the entire time I've chatted to you, and I don't think I've asked you how you actually got into cars, because everybody knows how I got into cars, but how did you get into car trading then? Um, how long have you been in car trading now? I know you watched my videos and you are inspired and you opened up. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's like if I could be one-tenth of the guy this guy this is. This chops guy is, yeah. Um, I've been doing it for like five or six years, and I was into motorbikes more, more before, so I was a plumber, my dad's plumbing business, doing it for him for ages, and he finally retired, and... Um, had a unit similar sort of size to this like 900 square feet or something and it was just full of his old stuff like like this but shelves full of but it was also all load of plumbing parts so every time like a plumber's merchant had closed down he just bought the lot of the stock dirt cheap so he had pumps there that were worth like two grand you know like heat, heating pumps for hospitals and whatever so anyway I, I organised all that stuff put it all on eBay sold it all off and um then I had this empty space and I was like, oh, I might start working on, I was going to get rid of the place because there's an expense to kill. And I started working on motorbikes in there and did that. And I was like, I'm going to sell a few motorbikes, got my trade insurance. That covered cars as well. An old mate started kicking about because I'd got a car and a car ramp at that point. And um, yeah, just thought, oh, it's easier selling cars. And how, long, how long since you got that big place you've got now then? Um, that was, well, Technically, the lease started January 2020. Oh, right. So, good time to take it on. We are open for like two months and then shut again. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. You're a bit like me then, yeah. I started, started off uh, near COVID, didn't I, as well? Yeah, now I've got all kinds of stuff like that. I've got all these down here, like coil packs for Fiat 500s and all kinds of stuff. And I need to just get shot of it all because I'm not really working on cars in here anymore anyway. So, I need to... I mean, why have I got an old alternator up there? What's that from? It works. But I don't even know what that's from. So it just needs to go in the bin, doesn't it? All this new, oh, I've got a window regulator off something. What have I kept that for? Yeah, it all needs to go in the bin. I just need to move the wheelie bin in here and just throw it all in. I'd be tempted to take some of your shelves like this and have them running across here, back to back, so you can store stuff there and there. You better sort of drive onto your little ramp there. This would be your sort of workshoppy area. And then you could have the cars in here doing the bits like you do, like the wheels I and valeting them. Or something, well, I don't even have to do that. Like you say, just put the shelves across there. So that's like a separate, that's the yeah. workshop area. It's generally hidden away. You've got your little ramp. So you can just whip stuff up there and work on it. But what you've got to be strict with is like one car in, one car out. Not like that's on the ramp having the wheels and I'm also going to yeah. do this and then I'm going to do that. And then it's yeah, just, yeah, a, I am, I'm really trying to like, People get annoyed at me about keep constantly going on about ADHD. But um, my, for me, the problems are like, I'm like, oh, YouTube's good. It's like, I really enjoy YouTube. So I'll do lots of other stuff with YouTube. And then everyone's like, you're doing too many videos. And I'm probably boring the hell out of everyone. So I'm like, no, I need to focus in and stick to the whatever. Yeah, I can be guilty of that a little bit, going back and forth in my head. Like, I have one minute, I'm like, get rid of it all. I'm yeah. paying. What, I, I came in the other day after you told me to do this. And I put all these cars in. I looked at them and go, do you realize I'm paying £600 a month just to store my shit? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought, and I can't drive them all at once anyway, and they always need something doing to them, so am I better off just selling them all off and getting one nice sports car that I really like myself, and just, I'll be able to get that, because all this stuff as well, you can't just get in at the end of the day, you've always oh, I've got to get a jump pack, I've got to get some fuel for it, I was doing that funny thing or the other funny thing. Um, 
Yeah, I know. It's, it's, and I, and I, the trouble is, I think the biggest curse of being a car dealer is if you actually like cars. You're better off if you're not interested in cars. Or if you, you know the kind of person that goes, oh, cars just a A to B transport. That's the best person to be a car dealer because yeah. they all just buy the sensible cars and they never have any crap hanging around. I think you need to do what I do, which is I like cars, but I don't really like owning cars myself. So I'll buy things like this Alpha. Like you, you've done it as well. You get to buy it, you get to enjoy it for a bit. But I know after two weeks, I'll be like, mm-hmm. And get rid of it so if yeah. i can buy it and sell it and my only problem is i look at it and it's like i get 48,500 miles and i'm like i don't want to take it over 49,000 miles mm. so i don't really enjoy using it and then if i've scuffed an alloy or someone's opened the car door in the car park i'm like oh, now i've got to go back and get that painted oh well you've got an extra five grand in your bank account now on that car so and it's for five grand I that's right it's like more than that <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, yeah, it's very smooth, very comfortable. It's got a very weird feature in it though, which I guess if you um, leave your foot rested on the accelerator slightly, it like buzzes, it like, makes a pulse. It's like through the, and it's got like an arrow saying to like take your foot off. It's like, why? I'm trying to keep moving. It's really annoying. PDO for the Tesla. Right. Uh, oil pressure, skip. Oil pump, skip. Clutch, skip. Yeah. Exhaust, skip. Diesel glow plug, skip. <laughs> right, end of the week, Saturday. It's gone two o'clock again. Um, it's been busy. I certainly haven't been very organized. So we need to do our end of week roundup. It's been a very odd week, not a good one for me personally. Um, but I'll try and give you the rundown of, of what's happened. We got a nice Alpha. By the time this comes out, there will be a video of this out, I think. Went and got this from James down at Chops. He'd bought it uh, local to him. Very cool car. That is here in the queue waiting to go around to get cleaned. And then behind that, you'll just see the... I thought it was black, actually, but it's blue from James, our paint man. We just bought that this morning. Very nice spec, actually. It's a HSE Luxury. And I've never had one of these, I've had quite a lot of these, Disco 3s and 4s. I've never had one with like piano black inserts and steering wheel bits and pieces and TVs and the headrests and all that sort of stuff. So let us know if you want to see a video of that one. Um, and then the forecourt is an absolute mess. Uh, we've got the i800, which sold, the Jaguar XFS, which is also sold. The M3 is still here, that's sold. Um, and then we've got like gaps here, the whole front of the thing's missing cars everywhere. It's all just a bit of a mess really. That's a sold car. And there's another sold car out the front. Um, been quite busy. And I think I might just hang on here now that everyone's gone home and I will, when I say that, I think Steph might be doing a private job in the workshop, I'm not sure. And have a bit of a tidy up. So it just feels a bit fresh when we come in on Monday and get ready to go. So, um, we'll do best car bought and best car sold, but we've decided after hearing some of your comments and taking them on board about doing too many videos and too many things going on and then realizing I've got too much going on and just stressing, we're not going to be doing the car of the week videos on Barry Motors anymore. Um, we'd rather concentrate on bringing you good videos on this channel because I was like, I started to think maybe I'll do less videos on this shifting metal channel so that we can keep doing them on Barry Motors and that just seemed very counterintuitive so yeah we're not going to do those anymore you might still see some stuff on barometer's channel you definitely see all of our new cars and maybe we'll try and put some cool little things on there but we're not going to be doing the feature videos um so what i'm getting at here is when i tell you what the car of the week is there probably won't be an individual video on it on barometer's but what have we bought i would say james's discovery four um because we love James and I love a Range Rover, as you know, but you know, you've probably heard enough about Range Rovers. So let's have a look at something else that we bought. 
because anecdotally I can tell you like a, a weird story about it. So I think it would be this BMW 530D, which is absolutely gorgeous. Maybe I should take this home for the weekend. I don't know. I've got something else I've got to drive for this weekend, I think. What was the mileage? I think it's only like 45,000, 42,000, 42 and a half thousand. So basically this was sold to us via Cars Bought For More, one of our subscribers. Not actually personally his, it was his cleaner's car, apparently. It's a hell of a car for a cleaner, but I think, you know, it was one of those things. There was a, a breakup, it was a partner's car, that sort of stuff. Um, we managed to, you know, we paid quite a strong price for it, really, because we were competing against the likes of Motorway and CarWow, etc., cetera, um, which tend to offer quite a strong price. And then when the person that comes to buy it gets there, they might knock you down a little bit. But we managed to meet somewhere in the middle, and he was keen for us to have it, which was flattering, as was his cleaning lady who owned the car um, so we went and did that got it picked up and um, paid you know well over 21,000 pounds for it and then the next day Jason had a phone call saying they wanted to buy it back which we've never had before Jason's never had that I've never I might have had that on cheaper cars but not on a sort of 21 old grand car um, and it made me very, very suspicious. I was like, what's this about? They're going to turn up here now and then pay. They're going to try and pay. I think it was actually what happened was um, the daughter had helped the mum with the paying and the transfer and whatever. And I think the daughter must have seen it during this sales process and thought, I really like that car. And then was, went away crunching numbers and maybe went to go look for another one and was like, I should have just bought that off mum. So they phoned up like, could we buy it back? So we'd agreed with Jason that we would do that. We'd charge... A couple hundred quid, sorry, for the inconvenience of having collected it and whatever, which we thought was very cheap, actually. Um, and then when I sort of spoke to the, the subscriber, I said, What's, this is making me a bit suspicious. I'm a bit worried about this. And he spoke to them and they were like, oh, no, they're just trying to, thought they might have. Who knows? But it's still here and it's still for sale, which is it's the best result for me because we wanted to buy it in the first place. It just made me very suspicious, but I don't think it was suspicious. I think it's just one of those weird family things that happens. So that is going to be my car of the week bought. What have we sold? We've sold quite a lot, haven't we? Was the... Did we sell the Jag XFS last week or was it this week? There was that, the Tesla Model 3 Performance, the second one that we had has gone out this week. Um, we've sold the Dacia Jogger, we've sold the Hyundai i800. Um, what else has he sold? Let's just say best car sold is... I don't know if I even said the Jag XFS for last week. I can't remember. It was the Hyundai last week, was it? Okay. Which we didn't do a video on that either because it sold like literally the day after and we weren't able to do a video on it. Um, so, yeah, let's just say the Jag XFS um, because that was very cool and it did not hang around at all. Biggest headache and biggest win... I can't really remember. Um, the The biggest loss for me this week was obviously losing Bash. He, uh, who was my dog, you would have seen him in the videos. He had. We don't really know what happened, to be honest, but we think he probably got to something he shouldn't have done, um, and had probably injured his kidneys without us realising. Um, yeah, I mean there are things at the garage here that could do it. You know, like coolant, engine coolant. Don't leave it lying around because your pets could get it, but. He was never interested in that sort of stuff and he was never really left out, I don't think. Um, so we don't know. Could it be anything it's daft, like raisins or grapes. Don't give them to your pets. They're very poisonous to them. But again, we don't think he'd been given that. But he did like to scavenge and he liked to find... There was one time, those of you who watched the channel for a long, long time, I don't even know if we're doing the weeklies then, but at one point, maybe a year or two ago, he got on the beach and he found something rotten, some horrible dead fish or, I don't know, a bit of livestock that had fallen in there in the sea and he ate that and the toxins in the thing made him go blind for a day he's walking around looking like you know mr uh what's the one that owns the uh mr simmons no mr simmons what's the one from simpsons the um one that owns the nuclear plant can't remember but the, the you know the horrible guy that owns yeah you know, he does those drugs and his eyes go really big he was a bit like that but anyway yes we um had him into the vets took him to the specialist vets, gave them an open-ended thing to get him sorted, but they thought they couldn't, regardless of how much money we gave them. So, yeah, that is that. It's very 
ship, but not much that can be done. So, um, yeah, that's all I can really say about that. Um, other than that, biggest win, I honestly can't remember. I've had a rough week. Um, I've had red eyes all week. But we've done some good podcasts, made some decisions that, you know what, life's too short to be doing way too much all the time. Um, so we're going to just try and focus up and, yeah, enjoy life. So that will be it for this week. I think by the time you're watching this, yeah, the... By the time you're watching this, the live draw for the BMW 730D will have been done. So you'll be able to find that. There's a, another channel, as I've just talked about having too many channels. But the live draw for that will have happened on the Feel Good Competitions one. And someone will have won that, which will be very cool. And we'll try and find another one. So other than that, that'll be it for this week. Please do like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And we will see you same time, same place next week. Bye bye. Oh, <laughs>